Hi, I'm Jacob Lenhoff. I want to show you some footage um, the ABC News did, um, a report on the aftermath of the Xenio High tornado that struck in 1974. Now, it was still years before I was born, but this, living in Ohio, this is one, it was one of the biggest stories I think in Ohio history. There was a super outbreak of tornadoes from the states, all over the southern states and the Midwest, and the one that hit Xenia, which is about an hour away from me in the 1970s, is one of the strongest, it was the strongest tornado of the outbreak. It was an F5 that destroyed half of Xenia. Um, it, it happened on April 3rd, 1974, years before I was born, but Xenia has gained a name for itself. That's what makes Xenia how it was famous, is that tornado. I'm going to show you footage of an ABC News report that was done in the aftermath of the Xenia Ohio tornado because when the Xenia Ohio tornado happened, it destroyed half the town and it was a big media sensation, national news coverage. ABC News and all and national news across America covered it because the town practically looked like 9 11. Um, hope you enjoyed this documentary on the aftermath of the Xenia Ohio tornado. Thank you. It was a place reporters and cameramen converged on because the devastation was so shockingly visible. It was the place where the twister cut a path of ruin more than three miles long and several hundred yards wide. We decided to go back to southwestern Ohio and take a look at Xenia a while after the spotlight of national attention was turned off to see how the people were coping with a disaster that is beyond the imagination of most of us. Our original idea was to squirrel the film away for a report to be done in six months or so. It was to be a, a then, in a then and now look at Xenia and the Xenians. But we found the mood of the place in the short-term aftermath of the tornado, such a compelling combination of hope, exasperation, and courage, we felt we ought to share the story with you this week. I had been at work. I came home, drove up on the other side of the high school, and looked at the, where the house used to be, and I just started to bawl. We got a home for sale. Would you want to buy it? You might have paid for it, too. Completely. No mortgage, no nothing. It seems a little bit unreal still, you know, as you look around and see all these houses out here. Kind of a... Uh... I don't know, humbling experience that as we, as, as powerful as we are and all of the controls we have over our destiny, that uh, Mother Nature can interpose herself in 20 seconds and turn the world upside down. I don't mind working, but when you don't see nothing in the future for your work, it's bad. But uh, like I told my wife, I say it's... Uh, I always work for things I wanted, but now I don't know which way to turn. I'm just scared. I'm, I'm thankful, though, that I'm still alive because some of my friends, they got hurt and some of them got killed. Considering the devastating force of the tornado, it was a miracle that in a town of 25,000, which was half destroyed, only 34 were killed. But for Mr. and Mrs. David Graham, who had huddled together with their family in the basement of their rented home as the tornado approached, it was a monstrous tragedy. The tornado's 300 mile per hour winds ripped their home apart, and when it was over, three of their four children lay dead. David Wayne, age eight, Billy Lee, five, and Sherry Sue, four. The next day, the Graham family begins to search for a place to live. They seek help from HUD, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, which has so far found temporary homes for 624 Xenian families. David Graham goes with his brother-in-law, whose home was also destroyed. It would be the same with him. Since you have no insurance, uh, HUD will pay for the you know, first three months, for sure, and, and then go back and assess the damage at your original home, and if, it's, if you still can't live in it, they'll renew your contract every month. Up to a year. Okay? The Graham's surviving child, seven-year-old Bobby, had been injured and is recuperating at a hospital in nearby Dayton. His parents come bearing the good news that they have found an apartment. Hey, we got another place to live. Yeah. Got another apartment. 
Hey, Delbert built a place right down from us. Yeah, Delbert and Delia live right down the street from us. And Missy, and Delbert Daly said he'd take you and get your hamburger just as soon as you got home. And I'll be out with time Easter. That's right, Easter yeah. Sunday. I didn't think you'd remember. By comparison, Joseph Lewis and most Xenians were lucky. Their losses were confined to major property damage. It has left them stunned, but not defeated. I know that I had a pretty nice house there that exists no longer, but, uh, you know, we're so very, it could have been a lot worse. And the fact that uh, my family's okay kind of negates that, that I can, I can repair those bricks and clean this land off and, and all of that. I think we're going to be reasonably okay. I know we can't get out without some kind of loss. Insurance companies have set up mobile offices all around Xenia to settle claims, but some tornado victims are finding they were underinsured. Mr. Lewis may be an exception. Your house is definitely total. You've got the 41,000 coverage, which um, can pay you any time that you want accept it. Some people have had to. Mr. Lewis refers to the complaints of some Xenians who say they have been pressured into making quick close settlements by unscrupulous insurance adjusters. State consumer affairs officials are moving to protect citizens against possible frauds by shady contractors, used car and credit furniture salesmen. The story of the tornado has been duly reported in the Daily Gazette, a Xenia institution for a hundred years. Like most businesses in town, it's been hard hit. 50% of its advertisers are wiped out, and these boys can't deliver their newspapers along routes that have disappeared into rubble. Editor Jack Jordan. We're concerned about the emotional letdown. We're beginning to uh, surface with some uh, petty hostilities here and there, but uh, if enough of us can hang on, and I think we can, uh, we'll get this thing turned around and provide some opportunities that... Uh, could turn such a devastating thing as this back into something we might look back on as having maybe an awful lot of good. Everybody's awfully helpful. Everybody but the Red Cross. When you've been on your own as long as we have, you hate to move in on someone. bothering with. You have to go through all kinds of signing papers. You can't have one nickel. You can't have a nickel and expect Red Cross to help you different places Not to sign, nickel. here, there, and everywhere. So and we just turned around and walked away from Hell it. We'll them. make it on our own somehow. Well, the Red Cross did do a fantastic job in providing shelter and food in this. Like any issue, the Red Cross has been subject to criticism here, but then all of us have been. We've uh, we've all learned, and we've all been short-tempered, and we've, we've made a lot of mistakes. But is there anything we can do to... But Xenia's city government has performed remarkably well. City manager Robert Stewart is coping with problems so monumental and complex as to confound even the most sophisticated big city mayor. A steady stream of high-powered federal, state, and military officials come to confer with him in his disaster command headquarters, but Stewart is apparently not awed by their rank. The cooperation from the Corps and the Corps' people has just been tremendous in this thing. The problem has been that we don't want to make any mistakes. Uh, we've tried to express to the state uh, uh, adjutant general's office that once this demolition takes uh, starts taking place we'll need adequate people to blockade areas and this kind of thing they're saying well don't even ask us until you've exhausted all these other remedies in an attempt to simplify the disaster relief effort the federal government has set up this center with all its agencies represented at one location but for at least one couple, Mr. and Mrs. Robert Clough, still disturbed by the trauma of losing their home, dealing with even a sympathetic bureaucracy is an exasperating experience. We have been to HUD. There's nothing that we can find out simply because we have a little bit of insurance. Our property cannot be totally replaced with the amount of insurance that we have. There's no living allowance because we could, could break up enough money to get our down payment or onto this rental property. It's just a complete runaround circle. U.S. Congressman Clarence Brown has set up a trailer in the center of town, manned this day by his administrative aide. Okay. I'm not old enough for Social Security, too damned old for birth control pills. I'm of the wrong color. 